Hello and welcome to Versus Live. I'm Ross Merriam. And I'm Corey Ballmeister. And we've got to Rob in the booth. Say hi, Rob. Hi, Rob. <laughs> Rob will be taking all of your questions, comments, concerns, and burns in the chat. Make sure to tag at Star City Games so he can see them and send his favorites over to us. Today, we're playing some historic. It's going to be a historic day. It's kind of a... I don't want to, is it the newest, for? it's not really the newest format because it's existed as long as Arena has existed, right? Yeah. I think Double Masters Limited is the newest format. Sure. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, <laughs> it's the newest format to get a spotlight on it. Yeah. We've had a lot of new cards injected into the format between Jumpstart and now Amonkhet Remastered. Yep. Yeah. Which is like Amonkhet and, you know, 15 cards that they just kind of threw in for funsies, I guess. Yeah, they added a new card this morning, too. <laughs> we don't know what it is yet, but they, they threw one in. Just <laughs> said, just figure it out. Card. Yeah, exactly. Blue yeah. White Dragon got added. So. Yeah, Blue Eyes White <laughs> Dragon got added. <laughs> the Boardwalk piece from Monopoly is yeah. added in there. Big yeah. Yoda. Yeah, Baby Yoda is actually in there. You can you can evolve your Baby Yoda and get, you know, Adult Yoda, uh, the Mandalorian got added yesterday. All kinds of stuff gets added to Historic constantly. Yes, it's, so. it's just everything. <laughs> uh, but the format has, you know, a, a lot of eyes on it now, a yep. lot of new decks being built because of some really powerful cards being injected into the format. Mm -hmm. And we wanted to, you know, take a, a moment to look at it. Yep. Uh, there was several tournaments over the weekend on Arena. We looked through some results. We found some decks we liked. Uh, you know, in some cases, made some changes to them that we thought were prudent. And, you know, these are decks that are doing well currently in the historic yep. format. I am going to be starting with Rakdos Aggro, uh, you know, a deck really built around Ember Cleave. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we've got Rotting Regisaur, we've got some big creatures. We're not really, we're not super low to the ground. Only one drop is Knight of the Ebon Legion, but it really is an Ember Cleave deck. And I like that quite a bit because Ember Cleave is going to be really good at attacking through zombie tokens with all yep. these field decks that are powerful. And while you bring that up, that is so far what this format's been about. And it, it seemed like before this uh, most recent edition, um, before uh, Amonkhet Remastered, Field of the Dead was pretty beatable. You know, there was a lot of decks that were uh, doing things that were going over the top of it or going under it, or even the control decks were able to keep up with it. But the more and more cards they add to this historic format, the more and more Field of the Dead decks just get absolutely ridiculous. And unfortunately, looking over initial results, Field of the Dead is dominant. So we really could play six different variants of Field of the Dead. We didn't, we're not going to put you through that. Um, but it seems like that is is the most defining uh, aspect of Historic so far, because it's really preventing you from being able to play that middle ground of decks, you know, mid-range and control. You really have to be playing really low to the ground decks like Rakdos, or you just have to be playing a different variant of the field decks. That's my only criticism of it, is field is just such a, our Justin Purnell zombie maker here is so constricting on the format. Yeah. yeah. Field creates such a robust end game that mm -hmm. trumps almost anything else that other decks are doing. 100%. And yeah. it's so difficult to interact with because it's just a land mm -hmm. that you end up with that polarized format where it's field decks against decks that are trying to end the game. Yep. And yep. so a lot of the decks that we're going to be playing are decks that are just trying to end the game. Uh, you know, Rakdos is certainly one of them, but it mm -hmm. does so in a way that is, you know, matching up, lining up well against 2 2 blockers. Yep. And that, yep. that's important. And your deck does the same by yep. attacking in the air. Exactly. So, I mean, we're seeing other decks um, like the one I'm playing. I've, I've been seeing, like, Seth messing around with Collected Company Spirit because it goes over the top of them. I think flying is going to be pretty important or doing something crazy over the top like Embercleave. So, I'm going to be playing Mono Blue Tempo. I know our roles are reversed here. You're usually the, the yeah, Mono I Blue player. I have the player. dinosaurs. You have the Mono Blue cards. It's wow, it's a paradox. Really we really, we want to, you know, try to get on the other side of things and get good at the other person's deck every once in a while. And mostly, I've been losing on the marbles like the last five <laughs> yeah. shows, so I gotta try to switch something up, you know? I mean, I didn't eat breakfast this time, you know, instead of showering, I just came here just completely smelly. I am trying to do all kinds of different things, so I hope that's okay with you. It's not, but... <laughs> okay, I'm perfect. We're all wearing masks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These masks are for smell protection as much as keeping us safe from COVID, that's for sure. But I'm gonna be playing Mono Blue uh, Tempo here, Curious Obsession, Low to the Ground, um, blue aggressive deck, nothing really too crazy, um, except, you know, you just get to play one of the best cards 
in standard in our recent time in Curious Obsession. You know, and uh, you get to back that up with some counter spells so you can stop the early ramp from field yeah. decks. And, Recently yeah. printed Lofty Denial, a card yep. that I you know keep on singing the praises of, works really well in this deck as well. Yeah. So uh, a lot of good cheap counter spells. You know. Good creatures uh, and and curious obsession. It's a winning formula. Exactly. So probably not the matchup either one of these decks were prepared for when they were playing these tournaments. But you know, here we are. So gotta beat some weird decks if you want to do well. Gotta beat some weird decks. All right. So let's just get into it. Like I alluded to earlier, I've been losing for the last year and a half, so I get to go first. Uh, okay, saved. I was like, this hand was about to be very very bad, but this hand is great. Yep, my hand's decent. I'm gonna keep. Is land. Your go. Swamp Thought Sees You. Hold. Spectral Sailor. Actually, do I even want to do this? So there's a chance. I'm pretty sure. So I'm going to reveal my hand. I'm not letting it resolve yet. But just thinking on my process, like, I think Curious Obsession is going to be your take no matter what. So does that mean I want to save the Spectral Sailor to maybe when I get, you know, a third land? to be able to go like cutthroat on two, then on three cutthroat plus sailor to pump it. Like that's kind of interesting. It, it's just gotta be curious obsession that you're after. And the one damage isn't that prevalent. So yeah, I think I'm just gonna let this resolve. And yeah, I will take the obsession. Yeah, it's just too good of a card. And now it's iffy because if I top deck curious obsession, I still kind of want to play it. But, and if I don't get a land, it's not as good too, but I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna draw. Okay, and pass to you. Uh, mountain pass. I will play a cutthroat. I will stomp it. Okay. Stomp in the yard. No, we're stomping inside. <laughs> okay, pass to you. No third land. No third land. So unlucky. Bone Crusher Giant. The Crusher of the Giants? Um, yeah, seems fine to me. Pass the turn. All right, cutthroat. Yep. Try to outclass this Bone Crusher Giant after a few turns, but it won't be this turn, so pass to you. All right, I got these two cards, okay? Yeah, Brazen Borrower and... And uh, Sailor, yep. Sailor. Back for four. I'll take it. 16. 16. I will play a Meyer Triton. Meyer Triton. Yeah, he's a Triton, friend indeed. Okay, yeah, that resolves. I gain two to 20. Okay. Mill two to lands. Okay. And pass the turn. All right. Um, end step sailor. Uh, cutthroat trigger on the stack. I will stop it. Okay. Brutal. All right, I kind of got punished for my lines of attack, but that's okay. Um, and I don't play too well from behind, so I'm quite scared of this. So I'm in a curious obsession. Get in there for two. Ugh, 18. And your go. This is definitely a punisher case for me using the removal spell and a cutthroat, but. Yeah, you got a good okay. board to come at me with, which is scary. It is true. Get in for six. I uh, will take it. Brings you to 10. Yep. I will play a Rampaging Ferocidon. I'll deny all that. Pass the turn. All right. Okay, so I'll start with an attack. 16. Draw my magical card. All right, here's at least one blocker for your Triton, but that's really all I got. Pass to you. Uh, Phoenix of Ash. The escape card, eh? Yep. Start getting some pressure. That's a good one. Um, so that has haste. The awkward part here for Corey is the creature he really wants to bounce is the Bone Crusher Giant, but if he does that, I just get a free stomp. Yeah. Yeah, don't stomp me. Um, yeah, that resolves. Send in the clowns. All right, I'm going to block here, and I want to petty theft that. Yep. Please trade, you take four? Yep. Brings you to six. Uh, 
and then I will play another Mire Triton. Ugh. I'll land Bone Crusher okay. at 18, and I'll pass the turn. Yeah, Mono Blue doesn't play from behind too much, and we're we'll definitely see the couple of spells you were able to sneak in are being very bad, or very mean to me. Excuse me, I keep getting the nose itch yeah, there. Missing that third land drop twice was rough. Yeah, I agree. I'm unlucky. 16. Draw. Um. So these both four cards in the end on that borrower. Yeah, not bad, not bad. Your that borrower out. could block that bone crusher. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, another cutthroat here to to potentially trade to the bone crusher is probably what you want. Yeah, I only have two left in the deck, so that's unlikely. Um, what can I do here? Not too much. I think I just have to play this and pass to you. Hey, Phoenix of Ash. Mm. Yeah, just the escape mechanic is so good against counter spells that are trying to one for one you. I gotta deny all that. Okay. Um, smush. I will block here. You go to two. Two. And I will go to 14. And okay. I think I just want to play another Bone Crusher as opposed to the creature in my hand, seeing okay. as you're at two and you can't really target them. Sure can't. All right, That's I'll play fair. this at end step. Yeah, that's a bad draw. What I really need is like Tempest Gin, but even that just trades. Also probably not in the deck. Um, yeah, I'll attack. 14. Yeah, I'm dead. I just have counter spells and some brazens. Yeah, I could have played another Frostodon, yeah. but like a, a petty theft is actually good against this, whereas the bone crushers are. Oh, yep, yep. No, that's a smart play. All right, beating and on the play. Those are the games that I should win, but it was just those timely stomps, you know? Yeah. Getting to see my hand early, knowing that my hand was definitely relying on the cutthroats because if they just ever got out of stomp range it seemed like you really couldn't kill them and then holding those back until a point where i get you like where those in into the abyss as i like to call them whenever it's like i have a high enough power creature that it's lethal and you just have to chump every turn you essentially had me in the abyss there where i just had to get rid of a creature every turn if i wanted to stay alive yeah. against that bone crusher now, this deck does not have a lot of interaction but my opening hand yeah. is thoughts he stomp stomp two lands two creatures yeah uh, let's keep and Honestly, look at, I mean, that's a very clear sign of Field of the Dead, just having so much connection. You can't really play that many removal spells like you normally would because yeah. killing zombies on a one-for-one -one basis is not good. Like, Legion's End was a very popular removal spell back when the zombies were everywhere in standard because it cleaned them all up. You know, so I could see something like that being much more effective, and maybe you have them, I don't know. but I do not, but we know. will see what I do have after a short break where we will come back with some sideboards and then finish up this match between Arrakis Aggro and Mono Blue Aggro. Hey, that's my line. All right, everybody, welcome back to sideboarding here on Versus Live between Mono Blue Aggro and Rakdos shenanigans over there. What is, what is it, Rakdos Sacrifice? Rakdos Aggro. Just Rakdos Aggro? Okay, perfect. Never cleave deck. Love it, love it. So from my Rakdos combo. Rakdos combo, yes. Uh, so it's Rakdos Splinter Twin. Gotcha. Yes. Okay. Rakdos so, Twin. <laughs> so for Mayan, uh, Spell Pierce is a very easy takeout. Uh, Hydroglyphic Illumination is actually pretty interesting to me, but on the play, I want to focus more on counter spells and not having to use my mana to cycle while you sneak in, let's say, a rod Riding Regisaur or something like that. So I'm going to take these out. One Borrower in exchange for Gus just being a better card against most of your deck, not against Rotting Regisaur. The body's relevant, so we're not taking out too many of those, but bringing in some Cerulean Drakes uh, to be able to have a, a good, consistent blocker. You do have some good black removal coming in, so it's definitely not uh, the perfect card by any means, but still decent um, at holding down the fort if I were to fall behind, and then a couple gusts to be able to uh, stop an Embercleave and stuff like that. On my side, we're just bringing in a pile of removal spells. Mm -hmm. This is what we have. Croxa is definitely the worst card in the deck. You know, it just spend, takes a lot of mana to yeah. 
get anything out of this that's relevant that affects the battlefield, and you yep. have a lot of ways to profitably interact with the escape, whether it's Gust or some other two-mana counter spell. Mm -hmm. So definitely want to get all of those out. And then with way fewer escape cards, Myra Triton's trigger gets less valuable, and the body on Myra Triton is not that valuable when you have a lot of one-mana one-ones that you can just trade it off for. So trimming down on Myra Tritons as much as we can, because there's only six removal spells that I really want, so I can't cut the fourth Myra Triton. I don't really want Angrass Rampage. Um, and the other cards are more for you know field decks than yep. mono blue. So yeah, it seems like uh, field decks uh, were very much the concern uh, for week one going in, and rightfully so. Yeah, I was uh, pretty surprised to see that card not get the ban when it was suspended after it was suspended. It's like, yeah, oh, you can have field, I guess. Yeah, yeah, no, I mean it, it's what it's banned in Pioneer, which is supposedly a more powerful card, and. I guess it's not banned in modern, right? No. But it's just not good enough for modern. Yeah. It's, I mean, it sees play. It's in the Amulet Titan deck. Oh, yeah. I'll play it. Yeah. Some of the control decks, even. Yeah, what am I talking about? I play it in the reclamation list I'm yeah, playing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so. Yeah, good point. All right, Rob, do you got any questions for us while we shuffle up for our second game? I do. Um, first small question. Taylor Fitness MTG wants to know, this is just the rag, the same Ragdos list from this weekend, right? Mm, it is close to that list. That list was main decking Ashiok uh, and sideboarding uh, Rampaging Ferocidon. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to make that swap, and I changed the sideboard a little bit. And then because I moved Ferocidon to the main and moved Ashiok to the sideboard, I think I made a small adjustment to the mana base as well. Okay. But pretty close. Yeah, it's yeah. like 70 of 75 cards. This is the second place list that I started from. Cool. Okay. Uh, and then Hestaeus wanted to know, have you seen LSV's Jund Coco slash Bull of Citadel deck in Pioneer? What do you think mm, about that? I actually played a league with it last night. Was it sweet? I've uh, seen it. It does yeah. really sweet things with Bolus of Citadel. Yeah, I, I bet. Was, I was very unimpressed with the games where I did not resolve Bolus of Citadel. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fun. Yeah, I, I think that's like the homework I'm giving myself is to just play some, first of all, historic collected company decks because I haven't played that card since I got my start back coming back into Magic yeah. uh, with Bant Humans. You know, that's, that's what brought me back to the game, what, God, like three, four, five years ago already? Uh, five? That's no, when BBD four, won four. World. Yeah, so, which yeah. Is the year I moved here. Yeah, yeah. A little over four years. Good times, good times. So I got to collect some company again for good old flashbacks. Yeah, that definitely is something to do. And these sacrifice decks basically look good in every format. They're yeah. like Bolus of Citadel is absurd in that. Bolus of Citadel, Bolus Rider so and Bolus of yeah. Citadel are best friends. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Wow, you it, you can just manipulate the top of the deck. It's so hard to lose if you have like even three creatures plus a Bolus Strider. It's really and a life total, of course. Yeah. but yeah, it, it's no, pretty it, tough. It is. Yeah. Wow, that sounds fun. I know there's a Golgari. Uh, um, Historic deck, too, that Oliver, too, just got uh, number one yeah, on the ladder with. They're all the lists are basically Golgari, and you can play Splash Red for Mayhem Devil if you want. Yeah, that gives yeah. you a huge edge in the mirror. Uh, obviously, like, you know, Mayhem Devil's insane and Sacrifice Mirrors. Yep. But it makes you a little bit less consistent, a little worse against aggro. Mm. Uh, so those are the trade offs. But they're, it's a base Golgari deck. Okay. Gotcha. All right. I am on the play. I'm going to keep. Those hands completely fine. Ooh. I am going to send this one back. Okay. Love it, love it. Five lands and no interaction. <laughs> Usually not good against the mono blue deck. Yeah. yeah, you definitely power mulligan against this deck a little bit more on the draw. On the play, you can keep a little bit more loose of hands. But... Yeah, especially on the play, you can keep just solid aggressive curves. Yeah, a lot of the yeah, time. yeah, because then sometimes that can just overpower blue anyways. All right, Rob, you got one more question for us? Uh, yeah, Hestaeus also asked, uh, do you think we could see a historic spirit stack, or do you think it's missing something like Mausoleum Wonder is too much for it? Uh, I, I, I saw Seth uh, have a spirits collected company list, and it looked pretty decent. Uh, it had, like, Rally of the Wings as, like, the two extra spells from collect collected company. You can't play too many more spells yeah. with that, so I think it was, like, basically all creatures collected company and, like, two rallies as, like, an over-the-top effect. I think it's possible. I think flying's good against Field of the Dead right now, so it's something yeah. to look into. I mean, you definitely yeah. want, you know, some counter spells against the ramp, too, so that's the mm -hmm. style of deck that you'd want to have. Yeah. I would be concerned missing out on Mausoleum Wanderer because the deck really wants to curve out a lot. Yeah. So missing one drops is uh, a huge blow to your consistency in doing so that's true yeah yeah uh, but th there it makes sense there's a, there's definitely some some things to like there You'd probably play like, like elves right like land wars and stuff as your one drops yeah you could do that i'm not yeah. sure if the mana base will support it yeah 
Ah, what's the worst <laughs> that could happen? <laughs> Maybe like Gilded Goose. Oh, yeah. Get another flyer in there. That's probably not a good one. One-time mana use, not great. Unless you can throw some Okos in there, which nobody wants to hear that word uttered anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so this is definitely going to be a keep. Okay. And I think I'm going to discard this, or not discard, but... Discard it. Now. All right, I'm going to play a Siren Storm Tamer and pass to you. Okay. I will... Thoughts easy. All right. Probably going to do the same thing as last time. I will take your Curious Obsession. Aww. <laughs> I'm at 18, you can go. All right. No fun. No fun whatsoever. Uh, I'm going to play a land. I'm going to attack for one. 17. And I'm going to play another Siren Storm Tamer. Pass to you. Pass the turn. I will play a Sailor. I will... Stomp the Spectral Sailor. It's been stomped. Untap. I'll attack for two. Fifteen. Another one. Here we <laughs> go. We got the beat downs. We got the beats. <laughs> we got the beats. We got the beats. Man, don't have legions on. I guess I could counter it, but still. <laughs> <laughs> um... Pass the turn. I will play another 1 1 flyer. I will kill the spectral. All right, all right. Bang. 12. Go. We got a plan. Uh, disfigure the Drake and okay. play a knight. All right. Pass. Three. Nine. Go. Uh, <laughs> that's a killer. Uh, attack for one. No blocks. You want to pump? I do not. <laughs> All right. Play Rotting Regisaur. Okay. Pass the turn. Uh, I have this. I'm debating if I want to play it or bounce. Well, you are not dead to Embercleave. Yeah. That's only 17. And... But next turn it would be lethal, so you don't really get to recast it uh, because I can just cast Brazen Bar and then you're dead. So I think it's safer. Yeah. Um, yeah, get in there. I'm at six. Your go. Might as well get the value out of the cards, because more than likely I'm going to run out of steam. And just needed a second red this entire game. <laughs> oh, brutal. Yeah, no kidding. That would have just brick host. I mean, for one, right? Doesn't it have to attack? Mm. Or is it just flying uh, haste? Yeah, it's just flying haste. Okay, I'm thinking of the other, what was it, rekindling? There's Not a, rekindling. There's a Phoenix. bunch of phoenixes that are forced to attack. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just not that one. Uh, yeah. <laughs> The beat downs, the 1-1 one, one beats. Gotta <laughs> love it. I just kept drawing one mana, 1-1 one, one flyers. <laughs> Flying man is a good magic card. Yeah, I guess. I guess. Yeah, they didn't really do too much else. On the draw for our third game. God, we might even be able to stretch this one. We got some time. I think I'm going to want another one of these. Could try to bring in Gus, too, but maybe not. I'm going to take out a counter spell on the draw. Um, something like... Lookout Dispersal. So, so far we've the determined pirates. that yeah. making your third land off is important. We have determined that. Try yeah. to do that. Yep, we've determined that. <laughs> Write that down. <laughs> Everyone, if you're taking notes, make your third land drops. That includes you, Rob. Write that down. Yeah. <laughs> oh, too good, too good. So have you played much uh, Historic? Not really. Not too much? To be honest. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've, uh, I've started to dabble a little bit, uh, but that was like pre Amonkhet. I haven't divin it, dove in since then because we've been, you know, practicing for the SCG event. Yeah. Um, but I, I think I really want to start diving in on some free time this week. It, it seems fun. I mean, it's a, it's a whole new world there, and there's a lot of different decks, and, like, we haven't had a pro tour with that format or Mythic Invitational or Mythic Championship or whatever, so we haven't had the pros to, you know, ruin the fun, essentially, and build the best deck, and then people always play that. So right now, it's still like the Wild Wild West whenever you queue up. Yeah, no, there's a, which the, is fun, a ton but, of space to explore. Yeah. You know, you're always encountering new decks, though. 
in historic, it feels like I've seen all of these decks before. They're all, oh, yeah. all in slightly different forms and different formats. Yeah. Uh, so it's not entirely foreign. I think like yeah. the Rakdos Pyromancer deck is probably like the the most unusual in terms of it, it doesn't really have an antecedent from a previous standard environment. Yeah, it kind of looks like a modern deck. I've played yeah. against it. I've beat it every time. With yeah. I've been playing like control decks, trying to make them work with just four Field of Ruin and stuff. Uh, just because I really like those style of decks, getting to play like Teferi, Hero of Dominaria, oh, yeah. and, and some Nicol Bolas and stuff like that has been fun. Um, but yeah, that deck always gives me a lot of trouble. It, it has a lot of game to it. Yeah, a lot, just a lot um, of grindy value despite playing all cheap spells. Yeah, but I think that is a deck that Field of Dead takes over. You know, so that, like many matchups, but yeah, that, yeah. That, can, that one can be rough. Hard to grind against a deck that just eventually puts, you know, 20 zombies into play. Agreed, agreed. All, all right, how's your hand? Uh, keep my hand. I want to keep two. And I will play a Knight of the Ebon Legion. All right. At 18. All right. Yeah. I will play an Island. Your go. Smush for one. All right. Pass the turn. Passing thy turn, huh? Okay. I think I just want to draw here. Thinking if I want to do any of these, but I don't think so. Um, so yeah, we'll just draw a card. And then I'll play a land and pass to you. Back one. No blocks. You're 18. Yep. All thought sees you. Nazis. Um Um, trying to think how I best want to play around a stomp. It's been very obvious that Ross has one or a braid. I mean, some kind of removal spell. Um, so pretty much anything I play into it is going to get hit. So I think I just let that resolve. Interesting hand. Yeah. Um, I am going to take the Ether Gust. Okay. Brings me to 16. Yep. And I'll pass the turn. Okay. Yeah, I still don't really want to play either one of my creatures because it just gets stomped. And uh, it's just such a good exchange for Ross. So I think I, and now that you know about Sensor, it's a lot worse. So I'm going to cycle Sensor, see what I draw there. Um, and yeah, I'm just going to untap. I don't want my sailor to die. So I'll play this and pass to you. Attack for one. No blocks. Brings you to 17. Yep. I will play my retreat. Um, sure. Brings me to 18. Yep. Ooh, build an Earthshaker counter. Love it, love it. Pass a turn. And I got to play something eventually here, but now I can't really, <laughs> all my ground creatures uh, kind of get rocked by this Mire Triton. Um, and step I'll play Cutthroat. Sure. One time. All right, I'm gonna play a Siren Storm Tamer. Hmm. 
stomp the cutthroat in response. Okay. And pass to you. Smush. Mm, I'll block Byron Triton. Take one. Yep. Brings you to 16. Yep. I will play Bone Crusher Giant. Uh, okay. Pass the turn. Um... Not a great spot for me. Debating whether or not to play Sailor. I could play and mutate, but that's pretty bad in the face of a removal. I could just play the Octopus. That can't really attack through. Um, I'm just gonna play the Octopus. Sure. One tap. Land and pass. Uh, attack for four. Um, Interesting. That's a weird spot for Hori because if he takes it, then the knight outgrows the octopus. Yep. But you don't really have a good block. Yeah. All right. In response, cutthroat? Sure. Block. Uh, what, hold on. You have two cards in hand, and I know they are, yeah, Obsession and Sailor. Yep. Um, so I'll stomp the cutthroat before blocks. Okay. Uh, yeah, I don't want to trade both my creatures, so yep, take four, down to 12. Down to 12. Uh, and step the skid's counter. Yep, I'll play this. Sure. Don't really have much of a choice. Quite far behind. Um, hmm. Just asking to get two for one here. I think I'll start by drawing a card. Yep. Curious obsession. Yep, I am dead. I've drawn many stops. Go, <laughs> you have. Yeah, this feels like a rough matchup. Just good, aggressive, early creatures, and then just loads of removal. Um, attack for six. No blocks. Brings you to six. Yep. I'll go to 16 and play two Bone Crushers. All right, all right. Got Earthshaker counter and <laughs> Okay, okay, well, I actually had a decent uh, defense, but that is definitely not enough. Yeah. GG. Well, I think we can uh, stretch this one. We got some time. This is a fast match. Yeah. This was, didn't really draw disruption that game. I was actually a r really happy when you cycled the sensor. Yeah. Uh, was, you know, my, my hand was all twos and threes. It was going to be hard for me to, you know, hold up removal and develop a board with yeah. the sensor up. And once you just didn't have any disruption back because I had thought seized away the gust and you cycle the sensor, mm -hmm. I'm able to just play out my cards as I wanted to. Yeah, I was really hoping I would cycle into a like a lofty denial or something because yeah. like once you know about sensor, it's pretty easy for you to play around. But if I cycle and you don't 
see interaction, then it's, it, I feel like it's just mentally harder to play around stuff because you're like, well, you would have had to have drawn it, you know? Uh, but, you know, I, and then again, I would have had to draw it. Yeah. So. <laughs> just didn't find any disruption. And exactly. Yeah. You know. It's possible that you wanted to just play into my removal earlier just mm -hmm. so you could make potentially a step, like just get rid of all of it. Yeah. So many threats, but that's also a, a hard sell too, because then I'm more freely able to tap out for my own threats and start putting pressure on you. Yeah. And like turn one, my only threat was octopus and spectral sailor. So I didn't play spectral sailor in the face of stomp there because I was just like, I had sensor, I had gust and I was going to play it a little bit more slowly. Uh, but then you killed something and I didn't have a creature and I had like a, uh, uh, curious obsession in hand, so I, I could have connected for sure one turn. So I got a little punished for playing a little too coy, but yeah. that'll happen. Rob, you got a question for us while we get ready for this next game? Uh, yeah, so curiosity is legal in the format. Um, as far as, as building this mono blue deck, how do you feel playing curiosity as extra curious obsessions over, um, say, C dash or octopus? Yeah, I think C dash or octopus is just a little better because you can. Um, it does still get bigger, you know, most of the time. It is still basically a Curious Obsession where Curiosity is just the uh, uh, draw card. But I know lists that are playing just like all one drops, essentially, like Tide, Hollow, whatever, the unblockable one mana one, just four Curiosity, four Curious Obsessions, and a couple Octopuses. And I think it's reasonable. I mean, it's the best card. I, I When I have a hand of one drop, two Curious Obsession, that's like my snap, you know? Um, so I could see it. I mean, that is the most important thing. Um, so I, I don't want to vote that out. I can't say with all confidence that that version would be better because I'd have to play both, but I definitely could see it, yeah. Yeah, there's um, there's some give and take to each of them. I like that Octopus can be a threat by itself. It doesn't yeah. happen that often, but it's really, really good when it does. Agreed, yeah. Um, and uh, some more threat-heavy lists are going to do better with Curiosity, probably. Mm -hmm. Also, the more uh, like cheap protection you have, the more Curiosity is going to be better. Yeah, play some dive downs, maybe, or yeah, something. Yeah. yeah, you have to commit mana on your own turn as opposed to Octopus that you can sneak in on their end step. Yep. Um, so it really depends on how the rest of the deck is constructed. Mm -hmm. uh, but th there, it's certainly not a slam dunk in either direction. So Agreed. you really just have to consider the the surrounding context. Yeah, and if like there's just a ton of removal. In the format, you know, which I don't think there is right now, then you would want to lean on more disruption and stuff like that. But if there's a, you know, if there's not a ton of removal, the more curiosities and curious obsessions you draw, the better. So yeah. I think it's a little bit of a metagame call as well. But and there's not a ton yeah. of spot removal around right now. Yeah. Like this is probably a deck with one of the larger amounts of spot removal in the main deck. I'm sure plenty I mean, sideboard into stuff. In the main, I guess yeah. you can sort of count Thoughtseize as other disruption. But yeah. That, every deck that plays that. that yeah. Uh, but it's really just Snop in the main sideboard you get six more so yep. post board you have quite a bit yeah was a fortunate game one to draw two of my stops yep you're lucky we all know it six stops in three games <laughs> you're stomping the yard okay i'm gonna keep it's not great um but i don't think you can mulligan this one i will keep my hand as well all right i will play one of these and pass to you uh, that was the worst possible okay a lock <laughs> all right I will attack for one. No obsession, love it. <laughs> Here you go. 19. It's like the one game you haven't had it. I know, I know. <laughs> it would have just landed cleanly. Yep, yep. Uh, mountain pass. Okay. I will untap. Attack. 18. Um, I don't think there's much removal that kills this, so we're just going to NBA jam. Here you go. I will heartless act the Tempest Gen. Dang it. <laughs> <laughs> I was wrong. <laughs> Mistakes were made. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm going to play Rampaging Frostodon. Okay. Pass the turn. All right. Untap. So that was a good draw. Now we got the obsession. Attack for two. 16. Let's go. Um, that's an interesting one to draw. I think I want to cast it. All right, let's hope you don't have another one. Here you go. <laughs> no, take one. Oh, yeah. 19. The shields are down. Okay, I drew the land. 
No, <laughs> God, you're so lucky. 60 all. <laughs> you're up. Wow. Okay. Um, your go. Uh, attack for three. I'll take it. 13? Yep. Uh, now it's time for Reggie. Roddy? Oh, that's going to be bad. Okay, that resolves. That's the turn. All right. Um... I'm gonna play a cutthroat. So I'll go to 12. Yep. Then I'm gonna gust this. Get a counter. Uh, put that on the bottom. Okay. Um, I'm gonna play a storm tamer and pass to you. Okay, upkeep, I will discard this now on Castable Embercleave. Okay. And attack for seven. No blocks. Brings you to five. Yep. And I will play a Rampaging Frostodon. Hmm. Um, in response, I'm going to cycle. Yep. And lookouts disperse all that. Pass the turn. Okay. Four. A curious obsession. This. Yep. An attack for five. Brings me to eleven. Yep. Draw a card. Play a cerulean drake. And I'll pass to you. I will discard a Bone Crusher Giant. Okay. It doesn't do a whole lot. And I will attack for seven. Mm, I think I honestly want to block with this creature instead of this one. Um, the protection might matter. I don't think there's a spell that kills this in your deck anymore. Um, I brought in three Heartless Axe, two Disfigures, and a Braid. Yeah, and, <laughs> and you've been drawing all of them. So, uh, so I don't, correct, I huh? guess I don't really have to protect, so I'll just block with this. Okay. And then I will pass the turn. All right, end step Spectral Sailor. So now that's a six, you have eight here? Yep. Okay. Just on the chump the dino plan as of now. Um, so I'll just attack with this. Six. Me too. Six, I go to five. Draw. That's an interesting draw. Um, I'll pass to you. Not a good sign. <laughs> Upkeep. Yep. The old chump the rotting regisaur attack with other stuff plans works sometimes every time. Uh, rampaging for us at all. I'll loftily deny all that. Pass the turn. Oh, that gets a counter. Yep. All right. So this is a seven, seven six. six. That's familiar. Um. Thinking if I want to give you the option to trade or just make you discard again. So if that last card, I kind of picked that last card as Embercleave, where you wanted to draw a land to try to finish me off. Um, I might as well get it out of you. And you only have to attack with a creature. Yes. Yeah, so Curious doesn't fall off. 
Um, but I also don't want to over attack and then just die. I'll attack with everything. I will make the trade that keeps me alive. All right, good call. I got a three. Okay, and then I'll play lethal threat. Your go. That's not good. <laughs> I'm dead. You were correct. I had a, I had another ember claw. I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> I knew that fifth land. Uh, I had the lofty denial, so I had a choice between I had tempest Shin and lofty denial the turn yeah. before, and I'm like, ah, the only reason, the only way I lose is three removal spells <laughs> for my creatures or one shiny sword. So, <laughs> all right, force in the game five. Yeah, you on the play though? I don't like that. Had some I've been struggling game. on the play. <laughs> yeah. Oh boy, anything we want to change? Nah. Well, I was gonna get that one when I ripped land four and had heartless act of braid for your board. Me too, me too. Yeah, I played a little bit aggressively there, but mostly I was like, okay, I don't think there's a removal spell for this first Tempest Gin at all, and then I forgot about Heartless Act, and I was like, well, you can't have the other one. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Any questions before we get ready for this final game of round number one, Rob? Um, yeah, so what do you feel like in the store? What are the best ways to interact with like the ramp style decks and the field of dead style decks? Um, so virulent plague or whatever the yeah. the one that just permanently deals with the zombies, the black enchantment. I think that's reasonable. You see in some of the lists here matchups that just don't line up well against Field of the Dead. They're just playing like three of those, you know, like Grixis Control, for instance, uh, would just play a ton of those. So those are good. Field of Ruin, uh, and then just Ashiok. Ashiok, yeah, and then just aggressive counters or just an aggressively slanted deck. You know, I think those are the only ways that you yep. can approach it. And if you look at the decks we're playing, there's a lot of those things yep, <laughs> going yep. on. Or you join them and you try to have the best uh, mirror deck, kind of like what we're seeing in Sultai Ramp right now. And what we saw from, yeah, I guess we didn't even mention this, uh, the Sultai... Uh, deck that won this last week insanely innovative, you know, and just kind of kind of did a little zagging when everybody was just trying to like add Narsets and stuff. They just went to a completely different flash plan. Did you see this list? Mm. Are you talking about from standard last weekend? Yeah, from the open we played yeah. in? Yeah, just a super cool take on uh, Sultai and just steamrolled the tournament. Um, but I mean, kind of trying to adjust your deck in such a way like that to fight other field of the deck decks. You know, I don't know exactly what that would be, but I think those are the only options. Like, really go under it, play crazy stuff like Virulent Plague in high numbers, yeah, four you, Field of Ruins, which I don't think even match up that well. And You should yeah. not be trying to interact that much with Field of the Dead. That's yep. the power of it, is it's very good against interactive cards. Mm -hmm. So you either need to just slam dunk, shut them down with something like Virulent, Virulent Plague, or yep. play cards that ignore that. Yeah, like, or counter spells. That's yeah. interaction that is decent. But you need but... you need a clock if you're going to play counter spells. True. You can't just true. counter their ramp stuff and then sit there fiddling, twiddling your thumbs. Yeah, yeah. And because eventually they're just going to draw a field of the dead naturally. And, and the rope will come down. I mean, if you're just twiddling your thumbs, eventually you'll 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 get timed out. It'll skip through your turn. You know, so. That is true. Yeah. <laughs> All right, great questions, though, everybody. Keep them coming in. We appreciate the questions here. Game number five, uh, setting the tone five. for today's versus live. All right. Nice. And Just will... as I say, setting the tone. Are we going to five? <laughs> uh -huh. Are you going to five? Am I, am I skipping the six? Uh, potentially. <laughs> Are you mulliganing? It'll save some time. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm not mulliganing. My hands are great. Oh. <laughs> My hand had good cards. If these three cards were islands, shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, ye of little faith. Yeah. <laughs> Keep the no lander. That might have even been a stretch for me, though. That uh. <laughs> if somebody ever at, like, actually did something like that and then rattled off the lands, it would just immediately be accused of cheating. Oh, yeah. Oh, just yeah. Just immediately. For sure. For sure. Just be like, okay, I guess their lands are marked. All right, let's try this again. Now. I'll keep, but it's much worse than the last hand when I would have top deck three lands. So. <laughs> uh, land go. Uh, Shaker Kenra, attack for two. Okay, beat downs. Pass the turn. 18. Jesus. All right, here we go. Uh, Phoenix of Ash. Attack 
for four. Oh, let's bounce those. We go to 16. Yep. You can go. Land to go. Land ho. Phoenix of Ash. Yep. Attack for two. Defense. De -de 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 Defense. Okay, take two. 14, you can go. Um, all right, I'll still play it. Sure. Don't really want to attack into that. So I won't. I'll play a Cerulean Drake and pass to you. Pass the turn. Cerulean Drake's pretty good, huh? <laughs> um, end step, I'll play a Cutthroat. I will Heartless Act the Cerulean Dragon response. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Done. Uh, now I'm going to stomp the Cutthroat as well. Okay. Untap. I'm glad Corey tapped out there. Uh, yeah. I'll play that and pass to you. Uh, attack for two. I'll take it. Easy to 12. twelve. Cards in hand. Three. Roddy. Let's turn up the heat. Okay. Pass. Scry two. <laughs> <laughs> My hand is not impressive, if you can believe it. Um, and neither are these cards. I mean, I guess I got to keep this top one. Really, not even that good. All right. Tempest Gen, yep. pass to you. And it's a five. Yep, Ooh. five four. Unfortunate. <laughs> yeah, I know. Dang Castle uh, Pitch Pitcher Phoenix to the Regisaur. Okay. And. Attack for seven. No blocks. You can see to five? Yep. Uh, then I'll play Rampaging Procedon. Okay. Pass the turn. Sweet. Um, your go. Okay. Upkeep. Discard Earthshaker Kenra. Okay. Um, declare tax. Mm -hmm. And I'm dead. I just drew all <laughs> lands. <laughs> well, that's Nothing. unfortunate. Yep, yep. Got beat badly. Kept a, uh, my opener was five land, Brazen Bar, Curious Obsession, and just drew three lands in a row. I'm like, okay, well, I'm dead. <laughs> yeah, that'll happen. Yeah, yeah. Should have kept that no lander. I knew it. <laughs> All right, well, that's going to do it for round number one. Rakdos takes it down. Deck looks pretty sweet. Yeah, no, you know? uh, just really powerful cards. I think the yeah. creatures, you know, when you're just playing the most powerful creatures, yeah. you don't need as much removal even in the, like the non-field matchups. Your creatures yeah. are going to dominate combat by, you know, just being big. And then Embercleave is, you know, we don't have to talk more about it. Yeah. We all know how powerful that card is. It kind of gave me a little feel of like Rakdos midrange. You know, that was the best deck come Dominaria yeah. time. And it, it had some styles of that, a little bit faster. And, you know, you didn't not, have not as, as much. much of the card advantage. No Chandra. Yeah, Chandra is the big one. I mean, that's that's a card that I think is, I actually miss, you know, because I, I, I think it would be pretty decent in the format. And I think it would be good. You know, I think it would be really good. Uh, but nobody really wants Kaladosh remastered. You know, that's, uh, I mean, maybe I do because I want to play energy for a little bit, but then I will swiftly get sick of it. So, yeah, immediately Banfield are going. Agreed, agreed. All right, everybody, that is going to do it for round number one here. What do we got coming up next for you? Oh, that looks like an 80-card deck. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I got a spicy little Yorian deck that I saw uh, trying to do what 
I said you shouldn't do. Play control. I'm gonna. I got a little Esper kind of uh, control deck coming up. What do you got? I'm going to be playing Azorius Auras. Oh yes. Uh, you know, I've been playing against that deck a lot. Yeah, it's yeah. around. I know uh, Oliver Two has apparently been playing a lot with it. Mm -hmm. He's very high on on the Mythic ladder. So yep. definitely a strong endorsement there. And you know another curious obsession deck. I couldn't let yeah. you be the only curious person. Yeah, I know. We are some curious cats. We're some cool curious cats. So we are going to take a short break, and then we'll have that match ready for you here on round number two on Versus Live.